This integration between ServiceNow Security Incident Response and Zscaler Internet Access supports four primary use cases. Number one, threat lookup of observables against Zscaler's global threat library. Number two, ability to block observables by adding them to URL categories and deny list in Zscaler. Number three, ability to fetch sandbox report by submitting an MD5 hash in Zscaler. Number four, ability to create a security incident automatically out of patient zero alerts that get generated in Zscaler. Now let us begin this demo by understanding the different configuration in this integration. The first step is to establish a connection between ServiceNow and Zscaler. Here is a sample configuration record. We capture the server name the API URL, username, password, and API key. The security admin can go ahead, validate, and save these details. As part of this integration, we support multi-tenancy that allows customers to configure more than one instance of Zscaler and use them at the same time. Now let us move on to understand how the URL categories are added within ServiceNow. For every instance of Zscaler that is configured, we auto-generate the deny list and allow list that correspond to blacklist and whitelist in Zscaler. In addition, the security admin can add additional URL category lists that are already configured in Zscaler. Let us see an example. The security admin can choose the server. As soon as the server is chosen, we fetch the list of URL categories available in that configuration. Let us add adware or spyware for this demo. The expiration period corresponds to the period that the observable added to this URL category would be active on Zscaler. By default, it is set to zero. If the administrator sets to a set number of days, now whenever an observable gets added, it would be auto removed from Zscaler after the expiration period. We also support creating change requests as part of this activity. And the change request uh, gets associated with this record. Only after the change request is complete will this record be active. Display tag functionality helps uh, display security tags against incidents. Now the security tag gets auto-generated after we save this record. The other piece that we'll have to discuss is about require approval. This helps kick in approval workflow whenever observables are added to this URL category. By checking this, the security admin can choose the approval group that would be responsible for approving observable addition to this URL category. Now let us go ahead and save this record. We see that the security tags get auto-generated over here. The admin can use the auto-generated security tag or can go ahead and change these tags. These tags help in identification of security incidents when a particular URL category is used for blocking. Now let us move on to the sandbox configuration. For every instance of Zscaler that is configured, we auto-generate the sandbox configuration record the administrator can go ahead and change these tags if required and set the record to active or inactive as may be required. Now, the last piece of configuration is about email notification configuration. This configuration is auto shipped as an out of the box feature. So this configuration helps in triggering an email to the users belonging to the approval group. So here is a sample approval email that the approver can use to approve or reject the uh, observable addition. This would basically navigate the user to uh, the record of approval. We will see this later in the demo. Now let us understand how security analyst gets benefited out of this integration. This is a sample phishing incident that gets created when a user reports a phishing email. As part of the automation, we extract the observables present within the phishing email. So we have leveraged the platform's flow designer to create a playbook that would guide the analyst investigate this incident. 
The steps are created as response tasks and available within the response tasks related list. So the first step is for the analyst to perform an observable threat lookup. Now, whenever an observable gets associated with the security incident for the first time, the threat lookup auto runs and updates the finding column. If required, the security analyst can perform an ad hoc threat lookup request by selecting the observable and choosing a run threat lookup option. Once the threat lookup action is complete, the work notes get updated and the results are available within the threat lookup re results related list. Let's navigate to the threat lookup results uh, related list to see the threat lookup findings. So we see that the observable is malicious and we also have additional information such as the source, the version and the history of threat lookups that have been performed. Now let us go ahead and block this observable because that is the next step suggested by the playbook. So if the observables are malicious, we can go ahead and block them by adding it to Zscaler Stenilist or any URL category that we have configured. So let's choose the observable and select allow slash block request. Now the analyst should be presented with the list of configuration. So let's choose the configuration that we had recently done and submit the request. We see that the uh, work notes get updated and it is pending for approval. So let us go ahead and approve this request. So here is the approval request. Let us go ahead and approve this request. As soon as it is approved, the flow resumes and the work notes get updated with the latest status. So we see that the flow is resuming after the approval uh, is complete. Uh, we should see that the flow is also successful and we can see that the tag gets added. Let us go to Zscaler. We see that uh, the URL got added to the URL category. Let us get back to the security incident and understand what is the next step that the analyst has to perform. The next step is for the analyst to see if there is an MD5 hash and submit it to Sandbox to fetch the results. Now here, as part of this integration, we do not support live detonation of files or URLs. On the other hand, if the sandbox report is already available on Zscaler, we would be able to fetch it and present it within the security incident by submitting the MD5 hash. So here we have the MD5 hash that is selected and submitted to the sandbox. So the analyst would be presented with the configuration to select. So here we choose the configuration and submit it to the sandbox. Uh, once the integration is able to fetch the report and the flow is complete, the work notes get updated and the tags also get updated accordingly. So let us navigate to the result record to see the details. So we see that the observable information, the finding and the submission status. In addition, we also get a detailed report uh, that is available as part of the integration. So all of these details are fetched from Zscaler Sandbox and presented here as an HTML file. So we get the classification, the score and other file properties for the analyst to perform the investigation or continue with the investigation. Now, the last use case is about creating a security incident out of uh, patient zero alert. Here is a sample incident that got created out of the patient zero alert. Now, the only prerequisite is ServiceNow instances email ID need to be configured on Zscaler side for ServiceNow to start receiving these alerts. As part of the automation, we set the category of the incident to malware. We extract the complete description or body of the email and put it against the description field of the security incident. In addition, we also extract the MD5 hash and add them as observables for the analyst to go ahead and perform a sandbox report fetching action that would help in further analysis of the incident.